Hello learners, welcome to the course Pedagogy of Science. I am Dr. Gaurav Singh, your course instructor for this course. And in this week, we are basically talking about the content come pedagogy approach. So we not only talk about some important topics or the concepts of science, which are there in the textbook of elementary level and secondary level, but we also discuss that how you can deal with these topics, how you can explain these concepts in your class, how you can facilitate teaching learning in your class when you are talking about these concepts. So today's topic of discussion is chemical properties of metals. Actually, when we talk about the metals in the class, and if you are in a secondary class, I'm not talking about the elementary level class right now, then learners already know that what are different metals and non-metals, what are their use in their daily life, where they use iron, where they use copper, where they use lead, where they use mercury, they know. They also know the concept of metals and non-metals because they have studied about it in their elementary classes. Uh, they also know about the physical properties of the metals because they have studied about the physical properties of metals at the elementary class like hardness, malleability, ductility and all that. Even the conduction of the electricity, they may have, have not seen about uh, the sonority, but sonority is also a characteristic of a metal, which is a physical property. If they have not studied in their previous class, they must have studied in the previous lesson, because when you talk about the properties of the metal, you talk about the classification of metal, non-metal, their place in the periodic table, the physical properties, and then you talk about the chemical properties. So what you can do to start your class when you are thinking that you are going to teach about the chemical properties of metals. You can ask your learners to make a list of the metals and non-metals which they basically use daily in their life. Uh, they can be given some examples of the metals in the small groups and they can also be asked to make a table of their physical properties that can be another activity. Uh, they can be asked to collect some surprising facts about the metals. For example, there is a very surprising fact about the metal or a good fact about the metal uh, gold is that if one gram gold is being converted into a wire, it can be converted into two kilometer long wire of one gram gold. So that much ductile this metal is. So can they collect some information about iron? Can they collect some information about, you know, silver, can they collect some amazing facts about copper, can they collect some amazing facts about sodium or some amazing facts about uh, you can say lead or mercury, let them collect. So the reason is because when you are going to introduce the concept of chemical properties, they should be aligned towards the concept. And for that simply asking questions will not work. If you engage them some exploratory activities, if you will ask them to collect something, to discuss with their peers, to find out some amazing facts, then the question will come to their mind that how it is happening. Uh, you can uh, give them some observational questions also to think and discuss like why electric wires are coated with a layer of PVC and all that. If it is being coated by a layer of PVC, what is the material used there? And you can also ask that as you classify the metals and non-metals on the basis of their malleability, ductility, sonority, uh, conduction of the electricity, these physical properties, can you classify also the material into metals and non-metals on the basis of chemical properties? So these instigative questions will basically motivate them to know more about the chemical properties of the metals. Now you can give them an opportunity basically to explore some chemical properties or common chemical properties of the metals like. You can ask them, do all metals react in the same way while burning? You can give them the metal pieces of aluminium, copper, iron, magnesium, zinc and sodium also with some precaution. And let them do the act activity under your supervision. Let them enlist their observations. Let them burn aluminium, let them burn copper, let them burn iron fillings and iron, let them burn magnesium, let them burn zinc and sodium. Let's see what is happening with the sodium too. 
when they observe the burning of different metals then you can ask them do all metals burns at the same rate what are the products which they are getting after the burning why the metal like sodium burns quickly when it is exposed to the air so it means that while burning what is burning students know what is burning burning means reaction with the oxygen reaction with the oxygen with during burning oxygen helps in burning so it means that every metal do not react with oxygen or air you can say in the same way here you can introduce the concept of reactivity like every metal has different kind of reactivity towards the air or oxygen all metals do not react uh, with the air or oxygen at the same rate and different metals show different reactivity towards the oxygen uh, you can repeat the same activity with the water how do metals react with the water let the learner do this activity also with different metals and observes so when they will do they will definitely found that there are metals who react easily and caught fire there are metals who do not react with cold water but they can react with the hot water or steam and there are metals who do not react even with the hot water or steam so what you need to introduce you just need to introduce a concept that metal reacts with the water and produce a metal oxide or hydrogen and then metal oxides which are soluble in water also dissolve and they further form metal hydroxide so this technical thing you need to introduce but all metals do not react with water so metal with water develops metal oxide and hydrogen then metal oxides again in water dissolve and make metal hydroxide so how do re metal reacts with the water you can start with the high reactive metals like uh, potassium or sodium because potassium and sodium when they react with the cold water they produce hydrogen and the hydrogen is too much that it immediately catches fire so the question which you have posed to them in the starting that why sodium catch fire when it is exposed to the air or water they will get the answer here because the heat energy which is emerging during their reaction with the water is too much that in the presence of hydrogen it catch fire now when you give them the calcium they will observe that this calcium also react with the water but it is not producing that much heat energy that it catch fire but they can observe that if uh, in test tube they are putting the calcium in the water the bubbles of the hydrogen gas are emerging and it sticking uh, around the calcium and calcium starts floating similar thing they can observe with the magnesium too then uh, the metals like aluminum iron and zinc they do not react with hot water or cold water but they react with the steam and metals such as lead copper silver and gold they do not react even with the water too it means then they can uh, draw a conclusion on the basis of their observation and they expand their inquiry that the reaction with the water is also not same for all the metals you give them some more opportunity let them elaborate their knowledge you can give them an opportunity to expand their inquiry and observe the reactivity of the metals with the acids they can experiment it and observe the reactivity of metals with the other solutions also the more they will experiment and the more they will observe means in the air with the water with the acids and other uh, chemicals they will get a clear idea about the reactivity of the metals that yes metals are not reacting with the same way with everything and here the concept which emerge is called reactivity series so what reactivity series is reactivity series is a list of metals arranged in the order of their decreasing activity so the metal at the top of the reactivity series reacts faster than the metal at the bottom after observing the reactions of different metals they may also be given the opportunity to develop a reactivity series of the metals and they can uh, classify the metals on the basis of their observation into least reactive moderate reactive and most reactive so least reactive can be silver and gold moderately reactive can be zinc iron lead copper these are the moderately reactive uh, elements then most reactive can be potassium sodium calcium magnesium aluminum which basically reacts with uh, most of the reactants 
So in this way, you can introduce the concept of the reactivity. Why this concept is important for you? Because when you are going to talk about the metal, its ore and its extraction, the reactivity series has its role. Because from here, we need to move towards the metallurgy. And when you talk about that, where do we found metals? They will tell you or you can ask them to explore and tell you after some exploration, some review that metals of the low reactivity are found in free state or generally as sulphide ores. But the metals which are moderately reactive are normally extracted from, from the carbonate or sulphide aids. And the metal of the high reactivity are normally extracted by the process called electrolysis from their ore solutions. So, what is the process of the extraction of the metal? Now this question comes. It is a long process. If you see the process of the extraction of the metals, it has different steps. Like first step is the purification or the concentration of the ore which we call enrichment of the ore. So the ores which are naturally occurring at uh, different places, those ores are basically first grinded into fine powders and they washed with the water using a flotation tank. So there is ore and there is gang. Gang is the impure, impurity in the ore. So if the ore and the gang is differing in their gravitational force, the gravity separator we can use, where the impure ores when run fast on the belt, make different heaps of the material and ores based on their gravitational attraction. Uh, if there are soluble ores, they can be separated from their gang, uh, gang on the basis of their happiness in a flotation tank or dissolving the minerals into water. Uh, there are and many other kind of separation techniques also like magnetic and chemical separation which you need to introduce to your students. How you will introduce, you need to think. Then there is a process called uh, converting of the ores into metal oxides. So after this purification, they are basically converted into metal oxides. How? By heating them on a high temperature in the presence of air, this process is called roasting. So what roasting done? Roasting basically converts the ore into a metal oxide and it dries the ore. It converts the sulphide ore, carbonates, hydroxides into metal oxides. So ore, whether it is in sulphide, whether it is in carbonate or it is in hydroxide form, it basically becomes metal oxide. Then the step comes where we get metal from its oxide. So the oxide of the metal are converted into the metal called reduction. Reduction is a process which is used to basically convert the metal of the oxide. Reduction is a process which is used basically to convert the oxide of the metal into metal. So some metal are obtained by the roasting itself, whereas some metals are reduced to be the process of electrolysis. More reactive metals are basically used by the process of reduction. Then when you get the metals, you purify it or refine it. So the metal which you have obtained from converting the oxide into metal is normally impure. Then there are processes like distillation, oxidation, electrolytic refining and there are many processes which we use basically to purify the metal. Now if this is a basic process of metal extraction from the ore, how will you introduce it? Will you give them a lecture? Will you ask them to note down the steps and they will never understand? what you can do. Nowadays, the best option for this topic basically is the videos. Because though you can visit a place where metal is extracted, but it is not possible that for every place to have a steel factory near them. The people uh, living in the eastern part can visit the Raurkela or uh, Bokaro and all places, but not every part of the country. So what you can do, you can show them the good videos of different process, the realistic videos. And then you ask them to make a flow diagram or the arrow diagram of the general metallurgical process which they are observing in those videos. So this way you can introduce these concepts. How do we extract the metals on the basis of their reactivity? So when there are metals with a low reactivity, basically you can ask learners to explore the metals which are being used to extract the metals with low reactivity, metals like copper, mercury, which are of low reactivity, which are normally found as sulphides. For example, the ore of mercury is called cinnabar. So what they do, they basically first concentrate it into the ore, then we convert the cinnabar into metal by roasting. Then from roasting, they get the mercury and then they refine the mercury. So this is the basic step of the extraction of the metals of the low reactivity. Similarly, you can show them the steps of the extraction of metals for the medium reactivity.
reactivity. Medium reactivity means the metals like zinc. So they generally found in carbonate or sulfide ores. Sulfide ores can be converted to oxides by roasting in the presence of air. Whereas if they are carbonate ores, uh, they can be heated with the limited air. So you need to explain to your students that first they need to think that what kind of ore it is, whether it is a carbonate ore or it is a sulfide ore. If it is a carbonate ore, the process is called calcination and if it is a sulfide ore, the process is called roasting. Then sometimes even we use coke also as the reducing agent where in some other cases aluminium can also be used and then we make convert them into the oxides and from oxides we extract metal. Similarly, if there are metals with high reactivity like sodium, potassium, they are generally uh, in concentrated form. So, we first concentrated them, then we convert them into ore by simple electrolysis process. They cannot be roasted or converted or calcification can take place with these uh, high reactivity metals. So we do not uh, convert them into oxides as they are highly reactive and they also do not need any purification or any other chemical reaction for the extraction. So if you have introduced the concepts like this, you can ask them to draw some flow diagrams, you can ask them to arrange the metals in the order of reactivity in a table, you can uh, give them the task to identify the examples of the reactivity of metals from their surroundings. You can give them some crossword puzzle or a small quizzes also on the basis of which you can evaluate what they have learned. So in this way, you can basically introduce the concepts related to the chemical properties of metal. I hope that this small video will help you to deal with this concept when you will introduce this concept to your class and you teach in your class. Thank you very much.